हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू शिक्षा सावी टूडेज लेक्चर विल बी ऑन प्लेटो बाई डॉक्टर आलोक कुमार गुप्ता दिस विल बी लेक्चर वन आई एम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विथ प्लेटो एज लेक्चर वन एंड दिस लिट्स टू यू जी सी नेट जे आर एफ कोर्स करिकुलम प्लेटो वॉज बॉर्न इन फोर ट्वेंटी सेवन बी सी एंड डाइड इन थ्री फोर्टी एट बी सी दो दिस बोथ दिस डेट्स stands debated nevertheless this is the widely accepted view that uh, plato was born in 427 bc and died in 348 bc for uh, better understanding of uh, western political thought i have included a chronology of uh, some of the ancient greek political philosophers or those figures who are taken to be as uh, thinkers and western political philosophy especially the ancient western philosophy uh, western political philosophy is divided into pre-socratic thinkers socratic thinkers post-socratic thinkers so pre-socratic thinkers are considered to be those who were born between 600 to 4 Hundred BC or those who existed between six hundred to four hundred BC. So you can see in the slides an exagoras of Clazomen many born five hundred BC died four twenty eight BC. An Aximander, an Aximens, Democritus of Abdera, Epidem, Ep, Empedocles of Acre. These are little tongue twister words. so viewers can have a look at it as per their convenience and they can also uh, learn the words if it is needed otherwise it is not needed just for knowledge sake you can keep it in mind heraclitus of ephesus this name you should keep in mind because uh, i have seen in one of the net jrf question this was there that who all created an influence on soc plato and plato or socrates and heraclitus name was there so heraclitus is one who did create an influence upon uh, socratic thought or platonic thought parmenides pythagoras of samos this is another one who influenced socratic philosophy or platonic philosophy thales is another one who was born in 624 bc and he also created influence on plato's philosophy then zeno of elia confucius now among the western political thinkers i have included the name of confucius just for an idea or you can say a bit of knowledge as to another great figure from ancient political philosophy belongs to china confucius was uh, born somewhere around 551 bc died 479 bc so this just helps you to locate that uh, in which era confucius was uh, confucius this did exist uh, so far as uh, political philosophy or political thought is concerned then comes the socrates so you should learn here over here that confucius was before socrates socrates was born, born in 470 bc and died in 390 bc so a very short span of time you can say uh, 470 minus 399 it comes to around 7 anyway you calculate for yourself mozi 470 bc 390 bc xenophon is another figure who was a pupil of socrates and uh, he he has also written his some of his accounts are also available but they are not considered to be that authentic because there is a difference of uh, facts and opinions between xenophon and plato the two pupils of socrates who have bestowed socratic philosophy to the posterity plato whose uh, real name was aristocles you can see 
428-427 BC. So in some account you will find 428 BC bond date of birth and uh, year of birth and in some account you will find 427 BC. Similarly, the uh, year of death also stands disputed and maybe in some account you may find another year altogether. Diogenes of Sinop is another controversial figure who is also credited with the founder of cynicism, another branch of uh, or another uh, stream of political thought which maybe we will be discussing as we proceed. Then comes Aristotle 384 BC to 322 BC. So you can easily relate that uh, Aristotle bo was born after the death of Socrates. Nevertheless, he, being a pupil of Plato, he too carries tremendous influence of Socrates on his philosophy. Mencius is another name. Then comes our own great philosopher, Chanakya, born 350 BC to 83 BC, died. Now, Chanakya is after Plato, Socrates, Plato and Aristotle. So this this you can easily locate. So this is for uh, this is just to help you understand that uh, another uh, other great names like Confucius of China was before Socrates, whereas Chanakya is after Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle. Then comes Zun Zunzi, three hundred ten BC, died two thirty seven BC through Vallubar another South Indian great political philosopher, half Fiji, Polybus, Cicero, Pliny the Younger. This Polybus and Cicero, we, maybe we will be discussing a bit, one lecture each. And uh, then comes the era of medieval thinkers. So as we proceed with the lecture, we will be dis I will be giving you a similar list of uh, medieval thinkers. So the first one, uh, Plato as you can make out from the slides he was a Greek philosopher born one year after the death of Pericles now who was Pericles Pericles uh, is uh, another great name uh, from the ancient Greek political philosophy his era is 459 to 429 BC he was a Greek politician and general during the golden age of Athens and uh, a historian, a contemporary historian of that time, Thucydides, you must be read, you must have read this name in the, in, in international relations. He was a realist and Thucydides acclaimed Pericles as the first citizen of Athens and reason for calling him so is that Pericles was a prominent and influential political leader of ancient Athens and he played role during the Greco-Persian wars and Peloponnesian war. Greco-Persian war took place 414, 499 to 449 BC and Peloponnesian war is one of the most famous war from the ancient Greek world which is also known as 30 years war which took place between 431 to 404 BC. and uh, Pericles governed from 461 BC to 429 BC, which is also known as Age of Pericles. So Pericles is uh, a famous figure for having championed the cause of democracy during his regime. And uh, as mentioned here, Athens was then the greatest of Greek polis, the educator of the Hellas. And Sophocles was at the height of powers when Plato was there. Aristophanes was beginning to entrance the demos. This is another name that uh, you should keep in mind because apart from Plato and Xenophon, Aristophanes who was uh, a comedian, a, a famous comedian of those days has also uh, depicted some of the dialogues of Socrates in a dramatic form. Nevertheless, these are not 
I mean, Genophone accounts and uh, Aristophanes accounts are not discussed or taught in political thought. But uh, just for knowledge sake, you can keep it in mind that uh, apart from Plato, Genophone and Aristoph Aristophanes presents you the dialogues that took place during the days of Socrates, which have been immortalized by his disciple Plato. Parthenon had been finished 10 years ago. Athens was quite strained in the Peloponnesian War, which took place between 431 to 404 BC, as I told you just now. And this was a war between Athens and Sparta, in which Athens lost and Sparta became victorious. And uh, the story also goes that uh, Athens lost to Sparta and this was one of the cause that uh, Plato became quite critical of uh, democracy and uh, he, he held democracy to be the root cause of all evils that existed in Athens and which led to its defeat in the uh, Peloponnesian War. Athens was witnessing the pass of democracy into those extremist forms which Plato so mercilessly satirized. satirized. And uh, Plato was a schoolboy when the great expedition sailed to disaster at Syracuse. Plato was a young man of 23 when defeat ended the war and the democracy in Athens failed. As I was just now telling you that Athens lost in the Peloponnesian War and he was a schoolboy. Plato was a schoolboy when uh, this war took place, I mean when this war came to an end. Plato's father was Ariston, his name was Ariston and he, Ariston, I mean Ariston traced his ancestry to the early kings of Athens, even to Poseidon, the god of the sea. And mother was Perictyon, who was a descendant of Solon. Solon is famous as uh, lawgiver of Athens and even today in the legal world sometimes this is used this name is used as a phrase Solon's law so his period is 640 to 59 BC Perictyon's brother Charmidas and uncle Critias were among the 30 tyrants who ruled Athens after the defeat of the Peloponnesian war Plato had one sister, Poton, two brothers, Adimantus and Glaucon. Adimantus and Glaucon are uh, part of his the dialogue that took place in Republic that we will be discussing subsequently. And one half brother, Antiphon. Half brother is half brother means that Plato's father, Ariston, must have married another woman and. Uh, this Antiphon was the child of child from another marriage. Plato's family was heavily involved in the oligarchic regime of 30, which took power in 404 BC after the defeat of Athens in the Peloponnesian War, and it is sometimes referred to as rule of 30 tyrants. And it was this rule that dissuaded Plato from pursuing a political career and led him into private life devoted to the study of philosophy. Now uh, another thing that I would like to point out here is that uh, different accounts depicts Plato's ambitions or aspirations in differently. In some account we get to know that Plato was keenly interested in politics and he wanted to be a part of the ruling class when that came to power after the defeat of uh, Athens in the Peloponnesian War. But since he was refused that he thought of rather than doing politics, he should write about politics. And it is there that he became one of the vehement critique of the rule of 30 tyrants, which was famous as a form of democracy. So, uh, the, the another account is that uh, Plato was basically a poet. He wanted to be a literary figure. He wanted to try his luck in the world of poems. 
but uh, owing to the prevailing circumstances during those days plato started reflecting on politics and that's how he ended up as a philosopher and a corollary to this is that it it happened because plato came in contact with socrates that he got influenced influence and he decided that he should write about politics rather than thinking of joining politics so different accounts gives you different uh, knowledge about uh, what was what were plato's aspirations and what he wanted to be but those facts are not that relevant because what is relevant to us is that plato is is available to us as the mouthpiece of socrates who has given us socratic philosophy by way of his dialogues so plato's real name was aristocles which meant the best and renowned this is another piece of information that one should keep in mind he was give what is the meaning of the term aristocles and uh, he was given the nickname plato because of his broad and strong shoulders which is uh, known as platis in greek language and from this word we derive the word plato he excelled in the study of music mathematics poetry rhetoric he fought in three wars and won an award for bravery he was always unmarried so plato was unmarried this is another piece of information that one should keep in mind later on when we discuss about aristotle he was married more than once uh, whereas an idealist like plato was never married so maybe one can compare how uh, what were the factors that shaped plato's political thought and what were the factors that may have shaped aristotelian political thought Plato met Socrates in 407 BC at the age of 20 and since then was under his hypnotic spell so decisive and persuasive was the influence that he abandoned the idea of becoming a poet that I was just now talking about it was natural that the trial and execution of Socrates in 399 BC proved to be a turning point in Plato's life now one can take note of the fact that socrates was born in 470 bc died in 399 bc so from 399 bc it uh, could be calculated that socrates plato came in contact with socrates in 407 bc so nearly 7 to 8 years of association had just so deep rooted impact on the minds of plato that he abandoned the idea of becoming a poet and started writing about philosophy or political thought or political philosophy the last discussion that socrates held was immortalized in crito now crito is another uh, big name that one should keep in mind because th- this is available to us and the form of platonic dialogue also and this is a dialogue that depicts a conversation between socrates and his wealthy friend crito of alopes and the d- dialogue is regarding justice injustice and the appropriate response to injustice and this dialogue took place after socrates imprisonment and socrates imprisonment is chronicled in uh, another dialogue of plato which is known as apology and uh, mind it here xenophon has also produced an account of uh, socrates imprisonment and trial which is available to us as apologia and and platonic dialogue is ap- available to us as apology and uh, xenophon and socrates account sorry plato's account differ somewhere but plato's account that is apology is taken to be more authentic now crito uh, is a dialogue in which socrates believes injustice may not an- may not be answered with injustice this is what is the argument of socrates and uh, socrates you know personified the laws of athens to prove this 
and he refused Krito's offer to finance his escape from prison because Krito was a wealthy citizen of Athens and he has uh, bribed the jail officials and uh, all other relevant people and has arranged for an escape for Socrates. But uh, Socrates refused and uh, the dialogue that took place between Krito and Socrates where Krito is trying to prevail upon Socrates that he should leave and escape. And on the other hand, Socrates is trying to argue that throughout his life he has taught obedience to law. How he can, he himself can disobey the laws. So, uh, the meaning of Krito is debated to determine whether it is a plea for unconditional obedience to the laws of a society or one may disobey. Socrates upheld unconditional, unconditional obedience to the laws of the society. And uh, many people date, it, date this dialogue to the same time as that of the Apology. So this is about Crito and Apology. Socrates was not the only one to be executed. There were many others also. Anaxagoras, another big name, and Protagoras, they were banished from Athens when this took place. Plato left Athens and fled to Megara where he took refuge with Euclid. Is This um, person is very famous in the field of geometry and he is famous as the renowned geometrician. From Megara he went to Egypt to study mathematics and the historical traditions of the priests. He then returned to Athens in 395 BC and for next few years fought for the city of Corinth. And in 387 BC he visited the Pythagorean philosopher, mathematician and political leader Archytas. Archytas was a Pythagorean. Archytas at Taras in the south of Italy. In 386 BC on returning to Athens, Plato's friend gifted him a recreation spot named after its local hero Academus. In some, uh, actually the pronunciation is Hecademus, but uh, slowly and gradually it got transformed into Academus or uh, many people started calling Hecademus as Academus. So many scholars derive the name of his school which Plato established as Academy deriving this this word from the name of Hecademus. It was here that Plato established his academy which became a seat of higher learning and intellectual pursuits in Greece for the next 100 years. And uh, the academy of Plato was not the only you know institution or first of its kind. There were many others also like Pythagorean school of Crotona established in 520 BC then Isocrates a school established in 392 BC and it was perhaps uh, the most well known and uh, those of you who want to know about Isocrates he was he is famous as a uh, ancient Greek rhetorician uh, a, a philosopher of rhetorics so you can google it and read about Isocrates <coughs> Academy was initially a religious group dedicated to the worship of Muses and its leader Apollo. The Academy, like the Pythagorean school, admitted women, so there were gender equality in practice. Mathematics was included, arith mathematics which included arithmetic and advanced geometry, astronomy, music, law and philosophy were the main subjects for study in the academics. The importance of mathematics was clear from the inscription at the portals of the academy Medeis Egometrotos Esito which means let no one without geometry enter here. This is uh, another remarkable knowledge that most of the philosophers to begin with they are mathematician. So, Plato also had great love for mathematics and this is evident from the 
inscription on the gate of academy that no one should enter should en- dare to enter inside without the knowledge of geometry then in 367 bc plato visited sicily on the invitation of dion in order to make the late king dionysius nephew and higher that is dionysius 2 a philosopher king Dionysius resented Plato's assertion that geometry held the key to statecraft forcing Plato to return home so probably Plato must have tried teaching ge- geometry first before making him a philosopher king which was resented and dis- uh, dissented by Dionysius too and uh, that made Plato to return back home In 367 BC Plato made another visit and this was to secure the recall of Dion who was now in exile and to bring about reconciliation between Dion and Dionysius too but uh, Plato was sold as a slave and was released only after the payment of ransom In 347 BC Plato died while attending the wedding feast of one of his students As merry making continued past midnight Plato decided to catch up with some sleep retiring to a corner in the house never to wake up so this was the event in which Plato died while attending one the wedding feast of one of his students and uh, what were the major philosophy major events of those era in which plato existed which may have influenced his political thought or political philosophy the first is the defeat of athens in her war against sparta that i have been repetitive about the tyrannical rule of reactionary oligarchs some of whom were his own kinsmen which i also explained that it was the rule of those 30 tyrants who came to power after the defeat of athens in Pel- peloponnesian war that uh, plato was most mostly a critic of and has had has developed some sort of aversion towards them even though some of his family members are part of those 30 tyrants third the restoration of democracy which tried and executed his beloved master socrates so the rule of 30 tyrants advocated themselves to have established democracy and this restoration of democracy socrates thought sorry plato thought that w- that it was responsible for the execution first imprisonment and then trial and then execution of his beloved master socrates fourth the decline of the city state and its traditional morality then the last one is these events left a great impression on his mind and changed the course of his life thank you very much see you in the next lecture. Bye-bye.